today we are going to be talking about inclusion with social development. Mental and physical retardation. Mental retardation are people whose development is behind their classmates and their academic achievement is behind. Physical retardation is a disability of a limb or also restraints in movement. Blindness or respiratory problems can be included. There are goals for mental retardation. You need to keep the lesson short and when you learn new material, you need to have steps that are direct and also needs to be short. And you can build confidence by having fewer tasks and before moving on to a new task, they need to make sure their current task is finished. And just try to avoid placing students where there's competitive scenes. There are many different disabilities from speech impairment, visual impairment, hearing impairment to attention deficit disorder. And that's troubles with thinking, learning, speaking, writing, spelling, and calculating. There's also attention deficit hyper disorder, and that is when students have the same troubles with thinking, learning, speaking, writing, spelling, and calculating, but they also have troubles being still, and they like to fidget and move around and have energy. Orthopedic impairment is your troubles with motor controls, and there's also emotional disturbance, which is it's hard to keep a relationship with others around you. And then mental retardation is behind their classmates in many different ways. There are three categories for mental retardation. There's educable, and those are the students who can spend their day in the regular classrooms, but they have individualized education programs. And those are known as IEPs. And those are when the teachers, students, parents, even principals can even set up a time where they can talk about the students learning and their disabilities and how they can meet the requirements they need to meet. They will have a meeting depending on how many times a year at least once or twice to see how the student is developing and what they need to do differently. The trainable, those are the students who need more assistance but they're not in the classrooms all day. They will leave the classroom to take a test on their own or if they have a Specialized teacher, for example, if they have troubles in reading, they will have a reading specialist who they'll go and read and try to keep up with their reading class and get to the next point. And there's the profound, and those are the students who can have function on a daily basis by themselves. Inclusion. It's also known as mainstreaming, and that's when the schools have to serve individuals with disabilities in the regular classrooms. And when the students with disabilities are in the classroom, they're actually benefiting all the students. And it helps them not to feel different and it helps with diversity and full inclusion is when the students in the classroom are at, in the classroom at all times, no matter what disabilities the students can have. Why inclusion? Inclusion is having students learn how other students learn. You're not going to have the same learners, and you're not going to have the same learners when there's disabilities involved. And so it helps teachers and students to know how to work together and learn about each other. And it also helps the students not to be scared of the students with disabilities. And it helps with self, um, self-esteem and not to feel singled out. There's actually a lot of programs to help, and those can be the schools, working with the students in the regular classroom. There could be tutors. You can go help a student with autism or Down syndrome on your free time or any other diagnosis and disability. The club I am familiar with is Best Buddies and that's when students with disabilities have mentors to help them through the day or just having a friend that they can count on and Best Buddy's goal is to develop a relationship with people that have been diagnosed, to have a good relationship with someone who does not have a di- has not been diagnosed. And Best Buddies is working on to also keep the people with a disability to have their job after graduating high school. In Iowa, there are actually eight colleges who participate, and that is Drake. Grandview, Iowa State, Mount Mercy, Simpson, Iowa, UNI, and Wartburg. And there's 19 high schools. Assumption, Bettendorf, Cedar Rapids Kennedy, Dowling Catholic, Harlan, Hoover, Iowa City, Iowa City West, Iowa Falls, Johnston, 
Lincoln, Lynn Mar, Mason City, Prairie, Roosevelt, Southeast Polk, Urbandale, Valley, and Waukee. Bus buddies should just promote. They need to be active throughout the school day and they can express what the club is about and how they help students with disabilities. Examples can be tutoring or small groups or pushing or talking to someone in PE. And they can also have after school activities, having dances or just simply going into the classrooms with students having disabilities. In my high school, Johnston, our best buddies went into health classrooms and they examples and showed students how students with disabilities live their life. And they had us experience their speech impediment by sticking marshmallows in our mouth and talking. They had us be blindfolded and learned how we couldn't see what was around us. Walking disabilities, whether it was a wheelchair or a walker or having splints on your legs and limitless of your hands, how you couldn't function with them. And today I will show you an example of a video of volunteers who demonstrate how students with speech impediment or can barely make speech practice. And here it is. So remember, go out and help a student with a disability because it makes their day and it will make your day to see how much they enjoy your company.